Welcome back, everyone, to this final match of day four of the, our second New Eden Open. This is Thingy versus Warlords of the Deep. This is the final round of their best two out of three. They've each won a single match. First match went to Warlords, second match went to Thingy. We're going to have to see who pulls it out here. Dolan, why don't you tell us a little bit about the uh, setups that uh, these two teams have brought? Uh, so we have the double Eos, Oniros, and, and with the Carries Hyena support, and then Ishkers with for to provide a lot of drone support and their support wing. And then we have the Claymore Basilisk, double Gila, double Caracal, sort of uh, brought... Me are those Rapid Le Light Missile Launcher Caracal? I will double check for you. Um, um, because this could be played Kitey, this could be played Brawly. They uh, are Ham Caracals. They are Ham Caracals, okay. And then we can see the traditional uh, one-point handicap that we're going to the deep has been giving the thingy every single match. Yeah, so the, the teams are now about to begin. There you go, time started. They uh, both came in at uh, decent range. Most of the uh, Warlords team came in at 30, some of them at 50. The entire team for the thingy uh, came in at 50. Uh, and already the uh, Warlords team spreading out across the field. They're going to try to make sure they don't get caught easily. Look at Kadeshi Priestess, the hero a hyena, getting really separated out here, trying to get on the back end of the thingy team. Uh, but other than already, that, mainly mainly holding patterns across the team. Already a Merlin down for Thingy. He got webbed really early. He got in a bit too close, got webbed, got taken down extremely quickly. And that's an early advantage for Warlords of the Deep. That Merlin probably had some damps on him, so losing him There's that the Nemesis really taking damage, and he's going to go down. He's not even moving. The Ishkers, uh, obviously a hugely powerful support wing here for Warlords of the Deep. We haven't seen a lot of damage support so far from these two teams. It's usually been just heavy damps back mm -hmm. and forth. Warlords bringing Ishkers, which are actually a great counter to that. It's a very, very hard to neutralize the damage they bring with their drones. And sending them out to basically search and destroy on these frigates means that the damage of the Nemesis and the damps and tackle of that Merlin are off the field. Mm -hmm. And already also, webs on the Basilisk. Webs on the Basilisk, the tackle on the Gila. This is, uh, the Thingy team needs to switch targets. They need to catch something else. But without the frigates, they just don't have any uh, way of catching the rest of these ships. Uh, this is a, looking Frigate. like a very, very... <laughs> Very strong start for Warlords of the Deep. Uh, yep. Now that they've got tackle for those Ishkers on the Basilisk, and now they're actually going to burn down the uh, Gila instead because they've damped the Basilisk out of range of the Gila, so they've just essentially neutralized it without killing it. I feel like it's a huge mistake for Thingy if you just to just go on Count Monte, Monte Carlo's Eos here. You can see they're, they're all wailing on him, and they're just not going to break They've him. got nothing. I mean, all of their damps, it appears, were concentrated Nick Domar, on this. Nick low structure on yeah, that Gila. He's going down. This is a dismantling for Warlords of the Deep. Uh, really, really, really strong performance, and not really up to the... Uh, uh, level that we've seen so far from Thingy. Uh, they, they're actually kind of breaking Count Monte Carlo, but it's probably going to be too little too late, as we're already seeing uh, as well now damage applied to the heal of Delica there, and uh, he is not getting reps. That Basilisk is still webbed, that Basilisk is still damped, and he is essentially neutralized from this fight. Was this a backstab from Warlords of the Deep? It's possible. I mean, you never know. These teams it kind of looked like they must have uh, separated themselves out, or uh, organized themselves to... Um, uh, be able to bring the same setups before. Uh, the thing that's webbing that uh, Basilisk very effectively and actually neutralizing from the fight is the Hyena. Yep. That Hyena is that not hero just the painter. Princess hyena. It is um, out there webbing with its long range webs on the Gila, or on the Basilisk, and uh, then actually d darting in to get webs on the rest of the team as well. Um, and the Basilisk just being completely neutralized. It has no way of applying any reps. We haven't seen any reps on it at all so far. Uh, we'll have to see whether they decide to go after it next or just pick off another target. It looks like they're actually going to be switching to the Claymore or Ferox there. Is that, uh, we'll have to see how well the damage applies to it. Uh, this is still no damage applied to anything other than Count Monte Carlo's Eos. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, like, this is, so we've seen this carries hyena combo quite a bit. Mm -hmm. This is a very popular attack frigate combo to sort of put in when you need, you have a little bit of extra points and you want a lot of control for very cheap and you want your control very fast and very easy to d sort of fend for itself, sort of just go out and just outrun any threats it has. The ca uh, but we've mainly been seeing the hyena for its painter. This is really u utilizing those long-range webs on the hyena yes. to really control a match. Using it very effectively, too. The, uh, there's not even a painter being used on nope, the thing. There's no team. painter at all. This is a purely web hyena. Um, this is, again, just a, a schooling from Warlords of the Deep. Uh, they, the only ships they have that have gotten within range of the Claymore are the Eoses. The rest of their whole team is staying away. The Hyena and the Carries are just uh, using their Ewar. The Ishkers are darting across the field applying damage. And uh, that means that the only effective primary that the Thingy uh, can shoot at 
is the two Eoses, which are obviously yep. terrible primaries. Swaps damage to the other Eos. <laughs> yeah, you know, you never know if uh, Count Monte Carlo might be bait tanked. It probably would have been ready to swap that to test that out a bit earlier, but, I mean, at this point, the match is effectively over. The Basilisk down. Um, it's only a matter of time. We've got GFs in local. Uh, both teams, uh, well, actually, a little bit, a little bit of... Uh, uh, potential uh, anger here from uh, one of the members of Thingy. Uh, we got GFs from the uh, Warlords team, and one of the Thingy Nyart gun pilots said, "Not really, but shrug." <laughs> so he may he may be a little bit uh, unhappy with this result. We'll have to see. Um, perhaps that indicates there was some kind of backstab. By the way, uh, so Hard SP has had amazing tournament performance. We actually saw in local earlier that apparently he stopped drinking alcohol on February 21st to prepare for the tournament. <laughs> What? <laughs> I'm that that is amazing. <laughs> I need to detox to be able to fly my best in the tournament. That's that's pretty impressive. Yes, uh, especially for someone from Eastern Europe. The Claymore Ferox now dropping through shields very quickly. Uh, it's really only a matter of time now. World of the Deep will be facing off against We Hurt next Saturday. Yep. In what will be an amazing and what will series. be the derailment. We'll have to see, man. We are surprises every time. This would be, I will say, though, this is their ultimate challenge. This is, this if, like, n they've not faced anything this tough before. Uh, I have no idea, really, uh, which which one, or whether We Heard has a chance. My heart really hopes that they do will, though. Do you think if I started detoxing before a tournament, I would be really good? You'd be a good commentator? Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, that's never going to happen. No, no. <laughs> But uh, the Claymore Ferox down. Uh, now it's only the Caracal that's tackled of Planet Six there left. Uh, and uh, he's going to be dropping very quickly. Uh, Ferox asking local, how did the EOS not break? Uh, <laughs> a little bit surprised that they weren't able to get through it. But uh, there you go. The Ishkers are all on top of that last Caracal. And that means Warlords of the Deep will be taking this match. And we have a little bit of a visitor is coming around behind wearing the hat. There is <laughs> CCP Rise. Now, Rise, does this mean that you're going to be uh, uh, throwing your vote in for uh, We Hurt versus Hydra in the uh, finals of the winner's bracket? He no. His head now. <laughs> he's not, he he's not on the train enough. He's sort of on the, ed on the edge of the train. Uh, well, only the Caracal for Plant 6 left. Uh, and with that, Thingy will drop down to the loser's bracket. Will they be playing against... Colbez and Sai. No, yeah, Colbez no, and Sai. No, no, Thingy will be playing against some of the winners of the rest of the losers' bracket. Ah, that's and right. Like, so we don't know who they're going to be facing They'll yet. eventually be playing against Colbez. <laughs> <laughs> if they keep winning, they probably will. Um, and I expect that they are going to do very well. Thingy, obviously an extremely strong team. Losing to Warlords of the Deep is no shame at all. Uh, this is a team that has destroyed many a great tournament dynasty. And uh, that is the match. With that, we will send you to some ads and be right back.